Hello and welcome to News Click. I am Paranjoy Goha Thakurta. This is the third and the final segment of the interview I did with Sham Benegal, India's greatest living filmmaker. The first part of this three part series focused on his forthcoming film on Sheikh Mujibur Rahman. In the second part, we discuss politics, the Muslim question, majoritarianism, communalism. In this, the third and the final segment of this interview, I try and get Sham Benegal to reminisce. He talks about the individuals who are no more with us. At least three actors, their fame was because of him. The late Smita Patil, Om Puri, Amrish Puri. He talks about others who are no more with us. Leela Naidu, Girish Karnad, Tom Alter, Vanraj Bhatia, Shotujit Rai, Mrinal Sen, Ritvi Ghatak, among others. Let's go back to your life as a filmmaker. Um, you were born in a Konkani speaking family, Chitrapur, Saraswat, Brahmin. Yet you made several films which dealt with caste, exploitation, the importance of caste, uh, including Summer in 1999, very, very critical of the caste system. Yet you are, um, I mean, Caste continues to remain an important factor in Indian, India's life. And the intersection of caste and class is something you've dealt with very frequently in several of your films. Would you like to make a few comments and observations on where we are today? Because the caste system hasn't died down. It's still as important as ever in shaping large sections of Indian society. See, in India, caste and class tend to be more or less the same, except that, you see, class system can change, the classes can change, but caste does not change. Now, the real problem in India is not so much problem of class as much as it is problem of caste. You know, and that hasn't changed. And we have not been able to change that as, as we planned to, as we have been fighting to. Because, you know, it's so, so, uh, um, I mean, the, it, it has such strong roots, you know, the, the caste system of the country. So, it has to be, it, it, and we've been fighting against it for a long time. And even people who are fighting against it themselves believe in caste. You know, and they are, they're, they're very proud of their castes. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, you know, you made your first film, I was told, at the age of 12, when you used a camera which belonged to your father, who was a photographer, Sridhar Benegalji. And much later, you did a master's degree in economics from Osmania University in Hyderabad, and you formed a film society over there. But cinema is part of your blood. You were a second cousin of Guru Dutt, whose maternal grandmother was the sister of your paternal grandmother. Then you worked in advertising. You were a copywriter in Lintas, and you made many, many uh, documentary films and advertising films and short films. But a lot of people remember you for the first four films that you made. 1973, Ankur, The Seedling, talking about the economic and sexual ex exploitation in Telangana, introduced actors like Shabana Azmi, Anant Nag, Sadhu Meher, all of them became famous. Then came Nishant. The end of the night, the night's end, 
a teacher's wife who's abducted and gang raped by four zamindars. And the officialdom turns a deaf ear to them. And then came the unique 1976 manthan or the churning, which was actually produced by 500,000 farmers of Gujarat, yeah. all of whom contributed two rupees for the making of the film. And you talked about rural empowerment and, and the formation of cooperatives. Bhumika, of course, was loosely based on the life of the Marathi actress Hansa Wadkar. Um, she led a very flamboyant and controversial life. But Smita Patil became famous because of her portrayal. And it's not just about an individual search for self-fulfillment in a patriarchal society. You talked about how even in earlier years, you talked about the issue of gender relations. And a whole bunch of people who very few people knew, some of whom are no longer with us. Film and Television Institute of Pune, the National School of Drama. You uh, taught at the Film and Television Institute of India, 60, 1966 to 73. You were chairman uh, twice, 80, 1980 to 83, 1989 to 92. And then, I mean, you, whether it be Nasiruddin Shah or Om Puri or Smita Patil or Shamana Azmi or Kulbushan Karbanda or Amrush Puri, you made them what they are. How do you look back on the films that you made in the 70s, 1973 to 77, Ankur, Nishant, Manthan and Bhumika? Well, I don't think about them anymore. You know, because uh, it, it's done, it's finished as far as I'm concerned. It was a, it was a, uh, it was a phase in my life. And that, uh, there are other things that, that happened. If I choose to live in the past, I, can, I would be thinking about them all the time. But I don't choose to live in that past. You know, I mean, some, some things were successful, some things were not so successful. But then it, life goes on, you know. And so I don't think about what happened yesterday. Because I, I have to think about what's, what's going on today and what I want to do tomorrow. I mean. I'm not going to think about what I'd already done. I don't want to get caught in the past, in that sense, you know. So I'm, it, it's one of those things. In fact, I often forget that there, there were certain subjects that I had touched upon, made films about, and so on. But then, you know, I don't think about let them. Me, and, let me remind you of three individuals. I dare say you made those three individuals, and they are no more with us. And all of them, at least two of them, died. Of actors. Yes, I'm yeah. talking about Om Puri. I'm talking about Smita Patil. I'm talking about Amrish Puri. Yeah, yeah. No, they were brilliant actors. In fact, um, all of them, all those three, started their film careers with me. I'm aware of that. That's yeah, why I yeah. ask you. Today because you're 88, and they yeah. are no more. They passed away, and yeah. they were much, much younger than you. Yeah, yeah. They were, yeah. You think about them? You have some recollections you'd like to make about Smita Patil? Oh, yeah. I mean, uh, there, 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 no question about it. She was because, you're, because she, was, uh, she was among the most spontaneous of all the actors that I've worked with. That was because she was not trained as an actress. You know, so her feelings would be very much more spontaneous than somebody who's trained to feel in a particular way because you know, there, there would be a difference in the way they perform. Now, on the, in the, from the same yardstick, you see Shabana, who was a trained actress. You know, but Smita was a wonderful actress, but she couldn't repeat what she did. You know, because she was not a actors from the theatre. You know, Shabana had training, so she could play the, you know, the, the, the parts in a, in a way because, because of her training at the theatre and training as a, in film school. 
But uh, Smita hadn't come. She came directly on the scene. And he, in fact, she wasn't even planning to be an actress. You know, until I saw her and I asked her parents if I could, if she would say yes to me if I offered her a role in a film. You know, so in Nishant, which was her first film. But after that, she got very involved in Sarma and so on. So she passed away at a very young age. At a very young age, I mean, she was about 30, 31, between 30 and 31, yeah. They were, you know, that that's very unfortunate, actually. She Because it really had to do with the... Uh, it had something to do with her... Not childbirth, but, but uh, complications following the childbirth, you know. Her son, of course, is doing well now. She had a actor, troubled... As an actor, yeah. She had a troubled personal life. Yeah, yeah. She had, yeah. What are your recollections of Om Puri? Well, Om was a, a, a trained actor. He went to the National School of Drama. But having said that, you know, his background was of extreme poverty. He had to get a scholarship to get into the National School of Drama. And he was a, you know, he, he used to do all kinds of odd jobs in order to keep himself alive. You know, and he'd done, he, his, his life experience was quite extraordinary. You know, from absolutely kind of uh, working class to middle class, you know, the, his life experience was, a, was an incredible one. Because he, he was brought up, in, he was, when he grew up, he grew up in extreme poverty. You know, so his, his education was also through scholarships and so on. So he was a, he, he, he was a, I think his experience, his early experience, uh, made him into a very fine actor. Because, you know, he, he had a tremendous sense of recall. Like Smita Patil, he had a troubled personal life. Well, you know, they, that of course, yes. You know, and, uh, Smita didn't have so many uh, problems in a personal life in that sense. Uh, Om had a lot of problems. And uh, it was very complicated. Including his addiction to alcohol. Yeah. That was, that was much later, of course. Because in the early years, he was, when he was working with me, he never, there was no alcohol in his system at that time. It was much later. What about Amrish Puri, who often played Amrish negative? Amrish was an extremely dedicated actor. Extremely dedicated. He had tremendous experience in the theatre. He also was, you know, he he was a, a student, meaning he he was a kind of chela of Satyadev Dubey, and uh, very dedicated. And Dubey produced plays, and Abrish Puri could do. I mean, and he was a he was an absolutely ideal actor. Because, you know, you could give him about a dialogue, dialogue sheets, one dialogue, that, 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 that's ten pages. He had such a photographic memory, he would just look at it page after page after page after page and say, okay, I'm ready for the take. That was uh, the other thing that he had was, even on stage, he would say, do you want me, you don't want me to blink, right? You want me to just look without my eyes blinking. He could do that for half an hour. Extraordinary. He too died at a young age. Yeah, well, yes, I guess so, yeah. Mm -hmm. There are three others who 
were not made by you. They were already very, very well accomplished by the time you use them in your films who are no more with us. Uh, I'd like you to recall your memories of three individuals, Girish Karnad, Leela Naidu and Tom Alter. Will you talk about Leela Naidu first? Well, Leela Naidu, you know, was a, she grew up abroad and she was very good at French. But when she went, um, she acted for the first time with uh, these people, I mean, uh, Jim Ivory and uh, his partner, what's his name? Merchant. Now, now you know, she, they brought Ivory her, Merchant. Yeah. So they, they brought her to India and she, she acted for them. And it was after that that I put her in uh, Trikal. And she was very good, very, very dedicated to her work. You know, she, she was absolutely wonderful as an actress. But unfortunately, she would, um, she had, a, you know, she got into, uh, because of Dom Barres, you know, he, she, they, they fell in love with each other, but the fact was that Dom was an alcoholic. And that had its effect on her. So she started to drink as well, you know, which was very, very unfortunate. Because according to me, you know, Dom was a very talented poet. But the fact was that Leela Naidu's career tended to get affected by that. Both were very talented people, of course. What are your uh, recollections of Girish Karnad? Girish, you know, Girish was probably one of the very best playwrights we ever produced. And also an actor. Yeah, it, 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 you know, it, and he wrote, and he chose to write in Canada. Although it was very easy for him to write in English as well, because he had, you know, he was an Oxford person and so on. And then he, he wrote English beautifully, but he chose not to write in English, but to write in Canada. And he did a brilliant job of that, because he was certainly, if not the best, one of the best uh, playwrights we produced. What about his acting talents? Well, you know, as an actor, he was, I, I'm not quite sure that his talent as an actor exceeded his talent as a, playwright. As a writer, playwright, yeah. How would you evaluate Tom Alter, he's also no more with us. Tom Alter? Yes. Well, Tom Alter was a, was, you know, he was a, he was another very interesting person because, you know, Tom Alter was an American, but he had grown up in India and he spoke Urdu with, with such excellent accent and uh, the, with the vocabulary in Urdu was fantastic. You know, Thomas, you, if you didn't see him, you wouldn't believe that he was an American. You know, because he spoke his uh, leja in uh, Urdu was unbelievable. Excellent. There was another person you worked with who's also no more with us. Who is this? Music composer Vanraj Bhatia. Oh, Vanraj, of course. Vanraj was, uh, again, See, I had the good fortune to work with some very great talents. Vanraj Bhatia was one of those. You see, because Vanraj was a student I mean, of a music uh, professor, Nadia Boulanger, who happened to be the teacher of pra pra practically every great conductor and uh, composer of Europe you know, in the 20th century. So he was, he studied with her. And uh, he, he, his compositional capabilities, you know, were, were outstanding. Outstanding. It, it's amazing, you know, you worked with people from Vanraj Bhatia, 
all the way up to A.R. Rahman and you. A.R. Rahman, of course, was a, you know, A.R. Rahman, there's no question that he is probably the most successful uh, composer we have. But he's essentially a film composer, music composer for films, and particularly for songs. You know, Vanraj was not, not that kind of uh, composer. He was mo mostly a composer of Western music. Mm -hmm. But mind you, Rahman himself studied a lot uh, Western music a lot. You but know, you... Rahman comes from a family of uh, musicians. You know, I see. His father was a uh, musician, and what's more, he was a musician for films mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. also a composer. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, you uh, you have uh, been a part of India's cinema industry or cinema industry for a very, very long time over. <laughs> uh, you started at age 12, but your first feature film, Ankur, was 1974. Now, you are often described as a pioneer of so-called parallel cinema in India. Well, that's a term I hate. That's a term I hate. It's somebody gave it, you know, and then so that's why I became a kind of I said, how can, what is the meaning of parallel? You know, it doesn't make any sense to me. But the fact is because, you know, this is, and what, what would you call your films like? I said, in the context of when I was making those films, I would call it new cinema. Because we were making a different kind of film from what the industry was doing. You know, I got you. What the, yeah. You, you made uh, a documentary film on Satyajit Rai. He worked with him a lot. Some people even say you had some sort of a professional rivalry with him, which I think was... There was no professional there rivalry. Was... I saw him as, a, as my guru figure, okay. you know. Okay. So, yeah. so, I mean, when you look at the greatest filmmakers in India, surely Satyajit Rai is one of them. And there are several others. I'd like you to name some of them. You know, I, I'd like you to talk about the great filmmakers uh, who, according to you, are among the greatest filmmakers this country In has India? Seen. Yes, Indian filmmakers. Well, without question, Satyajit Ray was by far the best that we produced. Then, of course, there's Ritik also, Ritik Ghatak. He was a b bit of a mad genius. And, you know, he, he left a lot of his work incomplete as well. But the fact was that he was very, very brilliant. There was no question about it. And then Mrinal, Mrinal Sen, was a very prolific, of course. I mean, you know, he, he, he was always in a hurry to f <laughs> work in the sense that, I don't know, he wanted to finish his film rather quickly. But then he was a very economical, you know, his, he, he, if somebody took a certain amount of money to make a film, he would make the same kind of film at about half the budget, you know. So Mrinal was, a, again, a very, very talented person, but always in a hurry, as I said, you know. Equally... You, you've named three filmmakers from Bengal. What about filmmakers from other parts well, of the country, the, including the, your uh, own state, Maharashtra? Well, there are some others like, but you know, I would, why Bengal? Because you see, the, the, it's, the, it's the way the market was in Bengal. Because you know, you, the new people who made new kinds of films could count on a middle class, no, but, urban, yeah. urban middle class audience particularly educated middle-class audience. But the uh, rest of India is not quite like that. Take Kerala. You had Adur Gopalakrishnan. You had the late Aravindan. You have had greats from the world of Tamil cinema, Kannada cinema, Telugu cinema. But that, you know, these are, these are people from industries that are where you can create a parallel system, you know. Adur, for instance, came from Malayalam cinema. And Malayalam cinema was because, you know, you, the, if you look at the literacy level of Kerala, you find that 
it has always been between 95 and 100 percent. So the, they grew up in an atmosphere where you had a great deal of uh, literacy and, and even people living in villages had urban lifestyles. You know, so there was a, there's a certain kind of, because Kerala is in many ways very different from the rest of India. You know, you were very high. But, but you've had them. very, very good films being made in the Tamil language, in Kannada, in, in Telugu. Would you not agree? Not in Telugu so much. I see. Uh, what about Marathi cinema? Marathi well, what films about are, people like say, Marathi films? Govind were, Nehalani. Yeah, Govind, Govind was not a Marathi filmmaker. He made one Marathi film. But the fact was Govind actually is a Hindi filmmaker. Hindi filmmaker, correct. But he made that. But basically, Marathi ha was on its own in the 30s and, and up to middle 40s. You know, where the, because the, the nurturing ground for them was Prabhat Film Studios. But when Prabhat collapsed, Marathi cinema, as a result, also to some large extent collapsed. You know, otherwise, it had the status of an All India film. But it, it reverted back to it being a re regional film, you know. Okay. Uh, how, how would you evaluate the current state of filmmaking in India? You have some uh, films which are being made by people, you know, who you know very well, you worked with them. My daughter has worked with Anubhav Sinha in Bheed. He's worked with Sudhir Mishra in Afwa. There's Nandita Das. There are several other uh, filmmakers in Mumbai who you wouldn't exactly describe them as mainstream Bollywood. Yet again, you know, they would disagree with no, When you say mainstream Bollywood, there's categorization. a categorization. These are formulaic constructions, you know. Because there is a certain traditional way of making films. And in that traditional way, you have songs and dances and various other things. And, you know, it's a kind of what um, some of the practitioners themselves say, masala film. You know, something for every, everybody. You know, that kind of film. You know, so, so it defies even genre. You know, the, it, it defies even the, the definition of genre because it, there, are, there is no genre. It's just everything in it. It's a kind of masala film. India is the biggest film uh, producing country in the world. Yeah. I mean, we, we still... No, but you know, in India, I think we, we created films. We didn't, we, we broke away from genres. You know, although there was at one time, there were like stunt films and, you know, comedies and this and that and melodramas. There were different kinds of films. But I think all be, they all put, got put together into one biryani. Yeah, uh, India remains the world's biggest, or in, just in terms of sheer numbers, yeah. Yeah. the biggest film producing country in the world. We're still making about a thousand films, but the entire... Uh, economics and the viewing habits of people seem to be changing with OTT or over-the-top platforms with technology and we see uh, a lot of cinema being made in other parts of the country and not just out of Mumbai which are also being recognized internationally would you like to comment a little bit about the changing trends see television has a slightly different background you know, because television did not go through the process of cinema. And it came at a time when it, it could very easily see itself as part of the te television revolution the world over. So our television, whatever you make for television, if you make a, a kind of a story in television, or you have these... Uh, different platforms now, where you have series, you make different kinds of uh, television series, and different kinds of, you know, four-part, six-part, ten-part series. You, it's no longer, you don't need the old construction of film, the old constructs of film. 
They, now it, it, it's much more, much closer to uh, life experience. And it's also television has... has when you say it, television, you no, also can, mean can come into, the, the smallest no, screen. See, yeah, since it has come into your home and you see it, then you see it as part of your own extended life. You know, it's part of that now. Cinema was not like that. It was always away from you. You went to, to the cinema and you and got uh, enveloped by cinema. Yeah, the, the, this, the, this the is, dark cinema hall, yeah. the, 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 the big so many, screen, yeah. etc. So, so is this good or is this bad? I mean, I mean, what are the positives and the negatives of the new experiences of, uh, of, of the audio-visual medium? What are the pros and what are the cons? What are the changes that you see? I mean, you've been long enough in the business to well, you know, evaluate now, it. Now, now, now is the time for television to, to, have, to sort of influence cinema in many ways. You know, it's, the thing has got reversed. I see. Uh, among the international filmmakers, who are the ones which have had the biggest influence on you as a cinema maker, as, as a filmmaker? You know, there are different people, you know, the European filmmakers. But neorealism has had, uh, I think, uh, uh, the earliest influences were from neorealism, from Italian neorealism. You know, Vittorio De Sica, people like that. But um, otherwise, I don't think uh, uh, it's been, I mean, I, I can't count any influence as such. At 88, what are the biggest, I mean, this is my last question to you. What have been your biggest regrets and what have been, you consider, your biggest achievements? First, your achievements? I have, I have very few regrets. Um, well, I've lived most of my life in any case, so and I have very few regrets. But I, I don't see, uh, you know, I haven't had great achievements in that sense. But I've had what one might call, uh, you know, I've had the, my share of <laughs> awards and this and that and so on. You're being very humble. No, no, I'm not being humble because... 18 National Film Awards. Dada Sahib Falke Award, India's highest award for filmmakers in 2005. Padma Shri, Padma Bhushan. Served I don't on so see, many... I mean, it's, it, to me now, it's all water in the bridge. <laughs> Under the bridge, you know what I mean? You know, I'm, I'm it's tempted... It's all done, it's in the past. I'm tempted to go back again to a question where I was... I, I wasn't able to understand you. You seem non-committal about expressing your views on the current political dispensation in India in the last nine years. Do you, I mean, I once again go back to you to ask you. No, I'm not, I'm not reluctant as such. I don't think, uh, but I think there is a, there has been a certain amount of stability you know, I mean, I may disagree with the, with the politics of um, our uh, leaders, but the fact is that, if we, I mean, that, that doesn't affect me as much as it would have elsewhere in the world. You know, because we, we can, we can, it, it hasn't, uh, I mean, my life hasn't been affected too much. But and people around me have not been affected so much. But, but surely you can't ignore... But the only thing that worries me is inflation. That's all? That, that worries me. What about unemployment? I mean, I mean Unem what, what about the fact that we see, are today the most populous country in the no, world? No, but when we talk about unemployment, there's, there's a lot of informal employment. Is it not formal employment, informal employment. You see, we have never had... When you talk about uh, percentage of employment, employment of what kind? Are we talking about government jobs? Are we talking about uh, in the industry? 
or are we talking about agriculture? What are we talking about? We are talking about decent jobs, as they are called. We're talking the, the about? Decent jobs. That you have made the film on child labor or a series for the International Labor Organization. The classification is a decent job. Many argue that today India is the world's most populous country. We have more than 1.4 billion people. The difference between India and China is the demographic profile. The median age of India is 28, 29. The median age of China is 29, uh, sorry, 30, 38, 39. Half the population is below that age of 27, 29. 27, 28, 29. That age group. Many argue that unemployment is at its peak. Decent work. Decent work as defined by the International Labour Organization. That we haven't seen this kind of unemployment among the youth, among the so-called educated youth as we are seeing today. But so I... with inflation, would you not say this is one of the, the biggest problems that we are facing in India at present? No, but you know, I, I think it would be wrong to compare China with India because you know, most of the resources of the country are in the hands of the government in places like China and the ex-Soviet Union. That, you know, you have that kind of thing. But India is not like that because, you know, we, we, everything is not under the control of the government. But wait, I could argue that the gap between the rich and the poor in India and many economists and many social scientists have argued and with facts and figures that we have become no, no, I know more that, unequal than no, no, before. I know that the, the uh, amount of wealth, national wealth, in the hands of, uh, is in the hands of very few people, as far as India is concerned. We have a problem of, we, we have not solved the problem of distribution. You know, it, 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 there's a lot of wealth accumulation in very few hands. Now that, we, we have to do something about that to get, so that it gets spread. Are we doing enough about it? I don't know, you know, I mean, it's a, I, 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 difficult for me to say. Okay. And I haven't thought about it also now. All right. Yes. I've, I mean, I think you've been very kind in giving me as much as you have. It's been more than, two hours that I've spent with you it's and okay. we've recorded everything and thank you very much for your time and for answering all the questions I asked you and even if I was not satisfied I was even disappointed with some of your answers you never uh, ducked or chose not to answer any questions so thank you very much Shyam Benegar Ji you have given your time for 2 hours I wish your health improves Thank you. from middling to good and you have a long life ahead of you. Thank you. Dhanivad. Namaskar. Thanks. This is where we conclude the third and the final segment of an interview I did on the 1st of July 2023 with India's greatest living filmmaker, Sham Benegal. I thought I would get half an hour of his time. He gave me two hours. We edited parts of it. In the first part, he talks about his forthcoming film on Sheikh Mujibur Rahman. In the second part, we discuss politics, the Rashtriya Swayam Sevak Sangh, Prime Minister Narendra Modi. And in this, the third and final segment, Sham Benegal is in a reminiscent mood. He talks about several people who are no more with us. Thank you very much for being with us on this program. Keep watching NewsClick and do remember to subscribe to the channel.